Hello, my name is Ivan Tejas, and I'm a graduate student at New Mexico State University. And today I'm going to talk about some of my work utilizing oak relief cotton for the management of Helicovarbazia, a cotton bollworm. I'll be talking about the impacts of the cotton bollworm on cotton and its associated control measures, the use of cotton cultivars with distinct leaf shapes and canopy structure to prevent bollworm egg hatch, and the effect of insect predation on bollworm eggs. I'll also be talking about the role of microclimate within cotton canopies. A little bit of background on the cotton bollworm itself it is a full metamorphosis changing from larva to adults. This process takes about 30 to 38 days in the summertime, uh, depending on the con temperature conditions. There are multiple generations during a single growing season, but of concern is its prolificous feeding nature, which means it could host on several different crops. This is why it's also known as the corn earworm or tomato fruit worm. There are several different management guidelines on the UCIPM site. These range from insecticides such as pyrethroids, neonicotinoids, to avermectins. You could even use an organic spray, the Celsterengensis, to control cotton bollworm. But sprays can be costly and disrupt insect communities, especially natural predators. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the oak leaf variety as a possible management tool. Now seen here, the third from the left, the oak relief is a palmately lobed leaf, roughly 60 to 70% the size of a broad standard leaf cotton variety, as seen here on the far left. Now because of this leaf shape, it allows for the development of a relatively open canopy, permitting greater air circulation, light penetration, and allowing for more incoming solar radiation uh, deeper into the canopy. It's been noted that the oak relief cotton is early to mature, develops open canopies, and as a result, um, uh, has lower relative humidity within the cotton canopy. This also promotes faster drying of soil and plant surfaces, can increase the temperature at or near the soil surface. It also reduces the instances of bull rot. Uh, because of all these factors, there's a potential of savings on insecticide applications, especially for late season pests, such as the cotton bollworm or tobacco budworm. Now, Pearson Monk found out that high temperatures and low humidity are stressful for many insect pests, especially Lepidopteran pests. This could have a negative impact on hatch rates for HZEA. So we set out to find out uh, how can the microclimate and oak leaf canopies affect HZEA egg hatch as well as predation. We set up two studies, one at the Landegger Plant Science Center in 2019. There we had three cotton varieties. A uh, two standard leaf, that would be Bolgard 3 and Akela 1517, and one oak relief, which is New Mexico W1218. These are planted in eight row plots in a randomized block design. We were able to um, uh, repeat the study at the Artesia Science Center in 2020, this time utilizing two cotton varieties, uh, Bolgard 3 for standard leaf and UA107 for oak relief. These are planted in eight row plots in a randomized block design. We kept track of the, the insect communities within these two studies by conducting weekly sweep net samples in the fields. This is looking for beneficial insects such as assassin bugs or big eyed bugs. We also set up two um, several types of Heliothus traps as seen here on the left. These have lures in them for cotton bollworm and tobacco budworm. To achieve our objective, we had to actually place cotton bollworm eggs out in the fields. We received, we got those eggs from our colony in Artesia. Cotton bollworm adults were actually in, um, uh, in cages such as the one seen here in the, in the, in the diagram. Uh, they would lay their eggs in the mesh and this mesh was cut up into sections in uh, 30 to 60 egg um, uh, clusters. These clusters were placed out in the fields at mid canopy, stapled to the top sides of the leaves. They were left out in the field for 48 hours. This is to observe any kind of predation or desiccation effects on the eggs. After 48 hours, the eggs were brought into the lab and observed them out with a microscope to see what sort of predation occurred, as well as to monitor larval egg hatch at 72 and 96 hours. Temperature and relative humidity were observed using hobo sensors, which replaced that mid canopy, as seen there on the right. Here's some results from our, our line decker study in 2019. Now, there was just cotton bollworm out in the Heliothus traps, even the ones with the budworm lures. The population of the cotton bollworm peaked in late September. We also saw many beneficial insects, such as, such as assassin bugs and ladybird beetles, as shown here in the pie chart. They make up the majority of the beneficial insects we found. 
we were only able to conduct one, a single X test in the line decker study. Um, from our analysis, we saw no significant difference in predation across uh, all cotton varieties. I'll go into some detail on type of predation in just a bit. We did see some variation in timing of larval hatch, mainly that uh, there was less hatch in the Akela standard um, on cotton, 34% versus 48% in okra, 56 in Bulgard 3. On the whole, we saw less hatch in the oak leaf plots, as seen here on the bottom right, 76% versus 80% and 90% for the standard leaf. Looking at the different uh, plant measurements, we actually didn't see any difference in light penetration, main stem nodes, or leaf surface area between the two, co the two cotton types. Uh, only the, uh, the, cotton, the oak leaf cotton was slightly uh, larger than the standard leaf, 118 centimeters versus 99. We also saw the temperature, a temperature increase in the standard leaf cotton, 30 degrees Celsius versus 20.6 in the okra leaf. In the Artesia study in 2020, we actually saw a combination of budworm and cotton bollworm in the Heliothus traps. These populations peaked in um, uh, late July. We also saw some of the same be common um, uh, beneficial insects, such as assassin bugs and ladybird beetles in the artesia fields. We actually saw a larger proportion of spiders, as shown here on the large um, uh, the dark red here in the, in the pie graph. Um, spiders could actually take whole eggs um, uh, off of the mesh and leave no, um, leave no trace of them. We were actually able to conduct multiple egg hatch and predation studies in the Artesia, in the Artesia study. Now, on the whole, we saw more egg hatch in standard leaf cotton in the three bio, in three bio assays. As shown here, I'm rep represented by orange uh, bar plots. There is much more uh, egg hatch in the standard leaf cotton. In the first study, uh, there's 51% egg hatch in standard leaf versus 19% in okra. In mid-August, we saw 52% egg hatching standard versus 27% in uh, oak leaf. So on the whole, it just it's just like night and day, more egg hatch in the standard leaf. I wanted to go into some detail here in the type of predation. While we saw a uh, total predation was very similar between oak leaf and standard leaf cotton, 41.3 uh, versus 41.2%, uh, we actually saw a slight difference in the eggs that appeared to be, quote, sucked out. Uh, we saw 7.2% in the oak leaf versus 5.7% in the standard leaf. Now, this, this happens when uh, an egg appears collapsed. This is due to an insect with sucking mouth parts, such as an assassin bug or a big-eyed bug, as well as a, a damsel bug. But on the whole, we saw total predation very similar between oak relief and standard leaf cotton. In the image here, here we see uh, a clay swing larva feeding on a, a, a cotton, a, a bullworm egg there. It appears just to be uh, uh, transparent when we actually see underneath the uh, microscope. Looking at the plant measurements there, uh, we actually saw, um, as expected, more light penetration at mid-canopy in the oak relief cotton. That's 37 versus 17. Uh, those uh, measurements are in 1,000 lux. We also saw uh, less leaf area in the standard, um, in the oak relief, excuse me, uh, 441 centimeters square versus 798 centimeters square in the standard leaf, as expected. So we saw more light penetration in that, at mid-canopy because of the, uh, the smaller leaves. Because we were able to conduct a um, number of studies in the Artesia, uh, in, a, in the Artesia fields, we actually saw significantly higher uh, temperatures in the standard leaf cotton. As you can see on the graph, circled in red, uh, we, there was three studies that had uh, warmer um, significantly warmer temperatures in standard leaf. This ranged between one to three degrees Celsius. In conclusion, we could see that egg hatch in oak leaf cotton canopies is much lower than the egg hatch in standard leaf cotton canopies. A total predation is very similar between uh, both studies in both fields. Uh, what we did see was temperature was slightly warmer in standard leaf cotton varieties. This ranged between one and three degrees Celsius. There was also less light penetration at mid canopy. Going forward, we have to see the role of shading and what happens uh, to bullworm eggs in a more shaded environments. But on the whole, we could see that this could be a possible management tool for farmers so they could avoid insecticidal sprays. Here are my references. I'd like to thank my uh, committee, my advisor, Dr. Jane Pierce, uh, Cotton Incorporated, New Mexico State, 
um, Ag Experiment Station for support and funding. I will take any questions at my email there. And thank you so much.